Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast, episode six. I'm your host, Adam, of course. Today, we're talking Transformers. We're talking robots in disguise. They're more than meets the eye. These movies, I'm not so sure about. They came out in 2007 and they continue to flourish all the way up until this week when Transformers Rise of the Beast hits the big screen. The seventh installment to the Transformers universe, the Transformerverse, if you will. I think I'm the only person that's ever said that. Let's probably keep it that way. Here's the synopsis via Paramount Pictures on IMDb. Set in the 1990s, Transformers Rise of the Beast will take audiences on an action-packed, globe-trotting adventure as the Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons join the battle between the Autobots and Decepticons on Earth. Noah, a sharp young guy from Brooklyn, and Elena, an ambitious, talented artifact researcher, are swept up in the conflict as Optimus Prime and the Autobots face a terrifying new nemesis bent on their destruction named Scourge. Mmm. Wow. That's a lot to take in. Feels like the Autobots are always right on the cusp of extinction every single time. One of the movies is called Age of Extinction, but we'll get there. Today on the podcast, we're going to be Briefly going over all these Transformers movies, the pros, the cons, everything, a little bit of trivia mixed in, and I'm going to rank them quickly. We're going to do this in a concise manner. We're going to stay on topic. We're going to stay focused. So let's talk a little bit briefly about this new film coming out. It's not directed by Michael Bay. It's not directed by Michael Bay. I think I kind of flubbed my lines there. That's okay. This is on the, this is off the cuff. So forgive me if there's some mistakes. He directed the first five Transformers movies, did not do Bumblebee, and he is not back for this one. He's actually retired from Transformers. He's done. He's, he's hung up the uh, robotic towel, if you will. No, the director here is Stephen Capel Jr., who directed Creed II, which was a solid film. I, I quite enjoyed that. Direction was good in that movie. I think he'll, he'll do okay helming this one. The movie's just shy of two hours long, which makes it... One of the shortest Transformers movies, believe it or not. It's crazy how long these films are. And the stories are so insanely stupid, it's remarkable. The Fast and the Furious franchise looks at Transformers plots and are like, yeah, that's a bit much. That's a bit extreme. <laughs> this is a standalone movie to Bumblebee, which came out in 2018. That's confusing because Bumblebee was a prequel to the Transformers movies directed by Michael Bay. Um... This is a sequel to Bumblebee, but not a prequel anymore to the Bayverse. It's going to set up its own trilogy. As I graze over my notes, I see that it stars Michelle Yu, Pete Davidson, Coleman Domingo, Ron Perlman, Peter Dinklage, and of course, Peter Cullen, back for the millionth time to voice the Autobot leader himself, Optimus Prime, as well as he should be. Peter Cullen is, is just terrific. It's such a voice of, of generation, right? It never gets old. Let's dive in to the first film that started it all. Obviously not the first thing that ever started Transformers. It's based off the Hasbro toy line from way back in the 80s, where I like to live. <laughs> Adam, Adam born in 1982. Big fan of the Transformers when I grew up a little bit. Was able to watch the cartoon series, buy some of the toys, and uh, yeah, we never looked back. Maybe we should have, though. Maybe we should have when we approached these Bay movies and look at what exactly worked with them. Not that the movies didn't work. They've grossed a stupid amount of money. They were all very financially successful, except for, I believe, Transformers The Last Night lost $100 million for the studio. But they're back again with a new movie. We'll see how it shakes out. The, the thing I had an issue with, and a lot of people did, was these Michael Bay movies, the character design was just very alien. And I get that they're aliens, but if you look at the cartoon and the toy line, they were boxy, they were uh, a little bit closer to vehicles <laughs> than we got with the movies. I don't mind them. I don't mind the design of them. It's okay. But let's jump in. 2007 Transformers, directed by Michael Bay. Runtime of 2 hours and 24 minutes. I believe this was also produced by Steven Spielberg. So you got the big names on this one. Spielberg probably produces a lot of them. It's, it's easy money at the end of the day for a producer. It stars Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, fresh off of Even Stevens. I think he was in I, Robot and Charlie's Angels. He was in these bit roles. 
course, Louis Stevens, a uh, fantastic character from the hit D Disney show, even Stevens. Here, though, he has, he's front and center. He is the star of this thing, Sam Witwicky. Joining him, Megan Fox. She has a character name. It doesn't matter to me. It's just, it's Megan Fox. She's hot. She looks good. She's sassy. That's all you need. Throw her straddling a motorcycle, uh, straddling the hood of a car. Really just a pinup girl for the ages. Then we have Josh Dumel, who's going to go on to be in a few of these as well. Josh Dumel might be in more than any of the other ones, to be honest with you. Here's the synopsis, the plot synop for short, if you will. High school student Sam Woodwicky buys his first car, who is actually the Autobot Bumblebee. Bumblebee defends Sam and his girlfriend, Michaela. I think that's her name. Michaela. Okay, Michaela Baines from the Decepticon Barricade before the other Autobots arrive on Earth. They are searching for the AllSpark, and the war on Earth heats up as the Decepticons attack a United States military base. Sam, I'm sorry, I can't read. Sam and Michaela are taken to the top secret agency, Sector 7, to help stop the Decepticons. But when they learn the agency also intends to destroy the Autobots, they formulate their own plan to save the world. This is the longest plot synopsis I've ever read in my life, ever. I guess that's fair because it's almost a two and a half hour movie about Transformers punching each other. Transformers. And speaking of sound effects, gosh, they're good in these movies. The sound design in Transformers is top tier. It's peak. What the Matrix movies did for the visual fighting style with bullet time, slow motion, kung fu... The uh, Transformers did for sound design. Kind of like the Star Wars prequels with the pod racing. The g -g 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 Transformers took that to like a level... Uh, they took it to a level 100. Love doing podcasts alone. I, I stumble on my words. It's great. Let's keep going. Trivia time. According to Megan Fox, she was attending a Linkin Park concert. And when it was over, the band met her personally and stated that they heard about the live-action Transformers film and requested whether they could have a song of theirs in the film. And thus, what I've done appears in the closing credits. That is a jam, too. Mm. That is a great song. And I love that Megan Fox is the one that brought Linkin Park to the table. <laughs> Loving her more right now. Really loving her more right now. Thanks, Michaela. I'll never forget your name again, or until I do inevitably when I talk about this next movie on the list. Here's the thing. Transformers 1, I like it a lot. I haven't seen it in a few years, but I know I still like it a lot. Watch that one. I believe it. I was in Las Vegas at the time with my wife. We were probably freshly married, newlyweds, and... The movie was playing like on the strip at one of the theaters. We were just we were just in Vegas. We lived in Arizona at the time, so we were only a couple hours from Vegas. It was sweet. You do um, you know, 3-4 hour drive, you're there. You look at the you look at the casinos, you look at the wealthy successful people and you just kind of live a day in their shoes without spending any money of your own because you're poor. We went to the movie and had a blast. She loved it, I loved it, and we were excited for the sequel. A sequel that would unfortunately really sully the first film's reputation. And from there, things would only get worse, in my humblest of opinions. But this first movie had state-of-the-art visuals, state-of-the-art sound design, this massive scale to it. And I know a lot of people didn't like this. I dug the shaky cam point of view from the human aspect of it, where it was just a cavalcade of destruction and vehicles smashing into each other. You couldn't make heads or tails of what robot was what robot. But it was so frantic and so in your face with the explosions and the noises. I couldn't help but just want more. And of course you had some of the most blatantly terrible product placement ever. My favorite was when... The all spark was like going loose and wild with it and everything it touched would turn into a robot. So a, a laptop with clear branding turns into one. A Mountain Dew machine is shooting out Mountain Dew cans. I, I think Sam at one point grabs one, pops it open. Thanks Mountain Dew. Optimus! Bumblebee! Maybe that doesn't happen, but he yells Optimus and Bumblebee a hell of a lot. 
And no one does it quite like him, and no one will ever again. Especially as these sequels start to unspool. But yes, the first Transformers, big fan of this one. It was a great start to what would inevitably be a massive new franchise for Universal. Is it Universal? It's Universal, right? Paramount or Universal? I get them confused, to be honest with you. I think earlier I... I oh, it's Paramount. Okay, Paramount. Let's move on to Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, a.k.a. Transformers 2. First film came out in 2007. Two years later, which is, of course, 2009. I did the math for you. We have a sequel. Two hours and just shy of 30 minutes. 229. It's bigger. It's longer. It's badder. Meaning worse. This movie is a shit show. I understand not a lot made sense in the first movie, but holy hell, we are completely off the rails in this one. Let's go to the synopsis from IMDb. A youth chooses manhood. The week Sam Witwicky starts college, the Decepticons make trouble in Shanghai. A presidential envoy believes it's because the Autobots are around. He wants them gone. He's wrong. The Decepticons need access to Sam's mind to see some glyphs imprinted there that will lead them to a fragile object that, when inserted into an alien machine hidden in Egypt for centuries, will give them the power to blow out the sun. Sam and his girlfriend, Michaela Baines, and Sam's parents are in danger. Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are Sam's principal protectors. If one of them, if one of them goes down, what becomes of Sam? My god. And that's like not even half of what's happening in this movie. At one point, the Decepticon disguises itself as a hot blonde college chick who seduces Sam back to her room and is getting undressed and making out with him before revealing it. Like, why take it that far? You have him in the room. Why start the seduction angle? Why get him on the bed? It was so bizarre. And it, there's a lot of, of bad in this film. What it has good, though is we have the primary cast back. Sam Witwicky, Michaela, rem I remember the name, Promises Made, Promises Kept, or something. Bumblebee, Optimus, the, the whole crew's here. It's still a fun time. You got Josh Dumel in the mix. I think Tyrese is in the first three. We got a Fast and the Furious crossover character. It's too bad. These are, are these both Paramount? That's Universal, I think. It would be nice if we could get that Fast and the Furious Transformers crossover movie. It really would be nice. Um, it's probably not going to happen, though. Regardless, this thing sucks. It was a massive step down, but the steps would keep going down further. And you would just tumble with them. And that's where we get to Transformers 3. But before we do, let me talk about some trivia here. Let me throw some at you. John Turturro was allowed to climb the pyramids during filming in Egypt. At one point, he simply broke down crying. When Michael Bay questioned him, he said, you just don't get to do this in movies. You don't get to shoot in a place that's 4,000 years old. <laughs> Can you imagine? I picture him, yeah, Totoro, a, a solid actor, really really on top of his craft, probably spiritually connected and all, all that crap. Crying at the pyramids, really appreciating the beauty and the splendor and the history. And then Michael Bay is just this total bro Chad guy coming over like, Totoro, what are you doing? Get up. We're going to blow this shit in a second. Totoro's like, y you just don't get to do this. Y you don't you understand, Michael? And Michael Bay doesn't give a fuck. He's like, how do I make Megan Fox look hot? Can I lean her on the pyramid? Will that be sexier than a car? Let's try it. I'm going to have a wrecking ball go up this thing, this, this giant devastator robot, and we're going to dangle giant balls from him that are going to look like a male's balls. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be freaking great. Let's go. Totoro, get up. Another, scene, uh, another funny piece of trivia. The college scenes were shot at both the University of Pennsylvania and the Princeton University. However, neither school is named in the film as both schools felt that the Judy Witwicky scenes were damaging to their image. If you don't remember, Judy Witwicky gets her hands on some brownies that are freshly made and potent, if you will. So she gets drugged out of her mind, uh, really on a high, starting to, uh, starting to hump things, wanting to make out with her husband. The little dumb robots are there. They're, they're going off on Mikaya, humping her leg. It's, it's a whole thing. And it takes place on this campus. So I can understand why maybe that's not the badge of honor they want to put their name on. 
Speaking of badges of honor, we have skids and mud flaps in this movie. Some of the most embarrassing characters ever put to the screen. Not since the Black Crows in Dumbo have, uh, have the black community been so poorly represented. <laughs> Skid and mud flaps are just so atrociously bad. They're like, damn, we're the, we're the bad guys here. What are we going to do? We're going to kill these mothers? We're going to kill these suckers? It, it's so embarrassing. And this goes on the whole film. Michael Bay would go on in the next movie to say, yeah, they're not in this. If you can find them in this, I'll cut you a check for $25,000. His words. <laughs> the reason this movie is also such a hot mess is I believe, which we're sitting through right now, a writer's strike was going on and Bay didn't want to wait on production for the script to be completed before he started filming this thing. He's like, eh, we'll fix it in post. Let's have Optimus drop down on a highway at night and start killing shit. We'll blow some stuff up and we'll, we'll write it off later. And that's what they did. And that's why we have the movie we have. Let's jump forward to 2011. Transformers, Dark of the Moon. Even the name is stupid. Dark of the Moon? What does that even mean? It means this movie's two hours and 34 minutes. We keep getting longer. We keep getting dumber. Shy is back. But not Micaiah. Megan Fox? Hit the, hit the sticks. Hit the bricks. I guess she pissed off Michael Bay, something she said off camera, or I guess it was on camera, probably in interviews about him being a Nazi or something. That was his direction. That's how he handled his actors. Michael Bay is notoriously tough to work with as a director. He's yelling at the top of his lungs like he's playing a round of Call of Duty with the boys because he kind of is. There is stuff blowing up all the time. He has to keep command. He has to keep people safe. I don't know what he's like, though, as an individual. It's very possible he's a total garbage person. I just don't know. Megan Fox seems a little sketchy at best as well. Regardless, they didn't get along. You don't bite the hand that feeds Megan. She's kicked off. Only later to return to the Ninja Turtles movies that he produced. So maybe they patched things up somewhere down the line. And he's like, hey, I'll give you a bone. You can go into these movies. I'm producing them. Now we have Rosie Huntington Whiteley or Wheatley. I don't, I don't know who this person is. I don't care to know who this person is. She sucks in the movie really badly. Fox was missed. Josh Demal's back, or Josh Demal. Tyrese is back. They've been in all three so far. We're gonna keep doing their war, war stuff, whatever they are. They're soldiers. Did I not get the Transformers? Oh yeah, there is a. Oh my gosh, I didn't get the plot for Transformers, Dark of the Moon, or Dark of the... Yeah, that's what it's called. Transformers, Dark of the Moon plot, IMDb. Let me just let me just bring this up really quickly since I screwed the pooch in the notes. And we're just going to head on down to the Synop. Here we are. Storyline. Autobots, Bumblebee, Ratchet, Ironhide, Mirage, a.k.a. Dino... Wheeljack, a.k.a. Q or Quay, I, I don't know that. And Sideswipe, led by Optimus Prime, are back in action, taking on the evil Decepticons, who are eager to avenge their recent defeat. The Autobots and Decepticons become involved in a perilous space race between the United States and Russia to reach a hidden Cybertronian spacecraft on the moon and learn of its secrets. And once again, Sam Witwicky has to go to the aid of his robot friends. The new villain Shockwave is on the scene, while the Autobots and Decepticons continue to battle it out on Earth. I don't remember any of that happening. I remember the moon stuff and thinking, what? Why? Here's some trivia for you. According to Michael Bay, 532 vehicles were destroyed in the film. They were given away by an insurance company at no charge as all of them were flood damaged. That old scam. Nice, well I'm glad they were put to good use. The Driller, which is this epic Decepticon that rips through buildings. That Now I remember, this is the one that's shot like an Avengers film. And I think they came out around the same time. And it was bizarre because they both looked identical. <laughs> There's buildings getting ripped to shreds. And this driller is freaking epic. It's just eating these buildings, going through them like wormholes. 
Anyway, this thing is composed of 70,000 pieces. It required industrial light and magic to use up its entire render farm and took 122 hours per frame. 288 hours in the driller's attack on the skyscraper. That is insanity. The amount of rendering, the amount of processing time for just that one section of the film. It is truly a spectacle though, and that's one thing about these Bayformers. They really are larger than life spectacles, and you do have to appreciate the craft as far as the action goes. And, and the cinematography is pretty damn cool, even if it does have the Michael Bay stank to it. Low camera shots in a 360 circle, slow motion uh, person standing up shots, looking up at the sky. It, it's very corny. But you have Linkin Park in the mix. That helps for sure. That helps for sure. This movie, just honestly, they're all pretty bad outside of the first one. Still watchable here. Some people say this one's better than two. Maybe I just don't really care about it. It had some cooler stuff in it for sure. It's less of a shit show for sure. But I didn't like the new characters. I missed Fox. I miss that chemistry. So all this stuff outside of the action was just miserable. Where are we at? Are we at Age of Extinction now? I think so. Okay, Transformers Age of Extinction. The fourth movie in the Transformers saga. This one clocks in at 2 hours and 45 minutes for a Hasbro toy line. Gosh, 2014. We lost everyone. R.I.P. Five years have gone by. No more Witwicky. No more, uh, I don't think we even have the army guys. I don't think Josh Jamal's in this one. I don't think uh, Tyrese is in this one. <sighs> yeah, instead we have newcomers Mark Wahlberg as Cade Yeager. Yes, his name is Cade Yeager. Nicola, or Nic Nicola, Nicola Peltz Be Beckham. Is she related to Victoria Beckham? She has to be. Nicola Peltz Beckham. Okay, whatever. TJ Miller, Stanley Tucci, and Kelsey Grammer. Here's the synopsis. For five years after the Decepticon invasion of Chicago, the Autobots were granted sanctuary into the Earth, believing they are a threat. They were secretly eliminated by an elite CIA unit with the help of a Transformer bounty hunter lockdown. Because of this... Optimus has since lost faith in humanity after the ambush that caused his injury and even considers leaving the plant. Wow, I'm, I'm reading too fast. Hang on, hang on. Because of this, Optimus has since lost his faith in humanity after the ambush that caused his injury. Okay, I'm sorry. This is just written so terribly that I'm going to have to kind of fix it. It wasn't that I was reading too fast. It's that this doesn't make any sense. Optimus gets injured. He loses his faith in humanity, and he goes into hiding in, in Cade Yeager's barn. Cade Yeager is a mechanic, and, he's, and he convinces Optimus to restore his faith in humanity after he helps him recover. There's a scene that we've seen in the trailers where Cade's in there, and he's like, Oh, I think I just found a Transformer. I think, it, I think this is a Transformer. And it is. It, it, was, it was Optimus. Together with his family, they join the Autobots to exterminate the Bounty Hunter and reincarnated Megatron in the form of Galvatron, of course. And the Cemetery Wind, oh my god, and the Cemetery Wind, which is an elite CIA, CIA unit tasked with killing Transformers. What is happening? This is insanity. The reincarnated Megantro Megatron, Megan, the Megantron's in this one. Megan Fox is back as Megatron. <laughs> the reincarnated Megatron is now Galvatron. And the CIA elite task force is called Cemetery Wind. Wow. This is a two hour and 45 minute movie, folks. I hate this film. It's really bad. They replaced a Mountain Dew machine at one point with a Budweiser cannon. Kale Yeager definitely drinks from this thing, too. He pops one of the bottles. I think he transforms himself. The Budweiser made me stronger. No, that didn't happen, but it might as well have. 
This is the one that has dinosaurs in it. I think this is the dinosaur one. People were excited about I was kind of excited about that, seeing the robot T-Rex running around. Optimus jumps on his back at one point. Yeah, here's some trivia. T.J. Miller reportedly did not get along well with director Michael Bay during the course of filming. Miller compared it to a very bipolar experience working with Bay, who once told Miller on set, Nothing that you've said is funny, T.J. Not one thing all day. We hired you to be funny. There's 300 people here. None of them are laughing at you. Say something funny. I can still cut you out of the movie. God. I heard TJ Miller is kind of garbage, so that would be hilarious to have seen. TJ Miller's been ousted from Hollywood altogether. Originally, Michael Bay was not going to direct a fourth Transformers movie, but he had an experience that changed his mind. And no, Jesus didn't come to him in the form of an Autobot. What happened was, after Transformers Dark of the Moon, Bay finally got to visit the Transformers ride at Universal Studios. Upon seeing fans waiting three blocks for the attraction, he realized he was not ready to leave the franchise yet. That's honestly awesome. That's re- and that ride is awesome, by the way. It's a cool ride. Michael Bay should be proud. He did make some kick-ass films even if they're completely stupid. The first one, legit pretty awesome. And the rest, it's kind of like Jurassic Park. And no, Transformers isn't on the level of Jurassic Park 1. But Jurassic Park is such a good movie. It's it's really just perfect for me. That all the ones after, I don't, they're just like their own thing. We have Jurassic Park, it's fine, it's great, it's a standalone. Everything else is just some icing on the cake, even if it's terrible. You, get, you still get dinosaurs, you still get action. That's how Transformers are to me. You got one great Transformers movie, everything else is a Saturday morning cartoon that occasionally has a good episode. Speaking of episodes of Transformers, here's one that's not good, and that's the final one for Michael Bay. He goes out on the lowest note humanly possible. Transformers The Last Night, 2017. Runtime. Two hours and 34 minutes. He actually scaled back like 10 minutes on this one. It's still so long. Why are these over two hours? Here's the... Sen- oh, I gotta give you the, the... We got Mark Wahlberg's back. Now we have Isabelle... Isabella Merced... Merced, I think, as Isabella Merced. I'm terrible with names. She is Dora the Explorer in that, in that movie that no one saw. She's been in other things. Cute little actress. We have Anthony Hopkins, we got Josh Duhamel's back, Josh Duhamel's back, and Stanley Tucci, who was in the previous film as well. Here's the synopsis. I I mean, I might have to, like, brace myself before I read this thing. Let me take a deep breath. (sighs) We've been running hot. Okay. In 484 AD, Jesus, I don't know if I can do this, King Arthur played by Liam Garrigan, and his knights fight a losing battle against the Saxons. Elsewhere, Merlin, Stanley Tucci, approaches the knights of Eacon, or Icon, oh my god, a group of Transformers hiding on Earth to help win the war. They hand him an alien staff, Jesus, before transforming together into Dragonstorm and turn the tide of the battle. But warn more li- oh my god, oh my god, But warn Merlin that a great evil will come for the staff. In the present, meaning present time, a year after the Hong Kong uprising, Optimus Prime crash lands on Cybertron and meets his alleged creator, Quintessa. She blames him for Cybertron's destruction and brainwashes him into helping gain Merlin's staff, which can absorb Earth's energy to restore Cybertron. Optimus is renamed Nemesis Prime. Earth is revealed to be the slumbering Unicron, the ancient enemy of Cybertron, and whose horns are emerging across the planet. What? What? There's no way a human wrote this. AI has been around longer than we think. There is no way a human wrote this. This is chat GTP. Holy crap. 
This movie is so bad. Genuinely an, a bad movie, not a fun watch. It's almost impossible to sit through. It's long, it's a slog. The action's so played out and boring. Yes, it still looks very nice. Yes, it still has a bloated budget, but no one seems to care at all about what's going on. And I just gave you crumbs as far as the plot goes. These are scraps of the plot. If you can keep up with it, good luck. Here's some trivia. Tyrese Gibson was set to return as Robert Epps, but he was unable to appear in this movie due to a scheduling conflict because he was in The Fate of the Furious. That was filming at the same time. Imagine being Tyrese Gibson and you are involved in two of the dumbest movie franchises of all time. He's made stupid money on these awfully dumb movies. <laughs> like, Tyrese Gibson's house is filled with Transformers and Fast and the Furious posters. That's incredible. That's what I picture. I picture the Hall of Shame at Tyrese's crib. And he goes down this really long hallway and the lights go on. And on every side, there's just Transformers, Fast and the Furious, Transformers, Fast and the Furious, just down the line. Oh man, that's amazing. Here's another, here's another fact for you, another fun fact. Michael Bay originally wanted to pass on directing this movie, but was persuaded to do one more by Peter Cullen. Peter Cullen said, one more ride. You can't do his voice. No one can but Peter. And Peter probably should have um, not said that. Yeah. That's Transformers The Last Night. I just remember he has a sword in it. And I think the dinosaurs are back for some reason. Who cares? Now we slow things way down. I don't think I... Oh, I don't think I put the date on this one. Let's get the date on this first. Let's get this all wrapped up in a bow for you. We're talking Bumblebee. Okay, 2018. How long after that was the last one? 2017 was the last night, not even a year later? Okay, wow. That seems off. One hour and 54 minutes. This is the first Transformers movie to finally be under two hours. Amazing. It's directed by Travis Knight, who previously did Kubo and the Two Strings. I didn't see that movie. I heard it was really good. Didn't see it. First movie Michael Bay didn't direct in the series, and it's a prequel, and I guess a soft reboot, because we've now learned that the new movie, Transformers Rise of the Beast, is a sequel to Bumblebee, but not a prequel to the Michael Bay movies. How confusing, but who cares? It's Transformers. They, they don't care. This one's a fresh cast, since it takes place way earlier. We have Haley Steinfeld. Spider-Gwen herself is in this. John Cena, Jason Drucker, and George Lendeborg Jr. I'm sure I said that name wrong, but we're trying our best. Here's the synopsis. On Cybertron, the Autobots, led by Optimus Prime, are on the verge of losing the great after. Losing the great after? Is that a thing? Okay. Being defeated by the Decepticons in the war on Cybertron, the Autobot leader Optimus Prime sends B-127, a.k.a. Bumblebee, to Earth to establish an outpost and protect Earth. B-127 surprises the training of a group of soldiers under the command of Colonel Jack Burns and escapes. However, he is ambushed by a Decepticon that damages his memory core and voice box, as happened time and time again with Bumblebee. The guy can never just talk in any of these movies. But B-127 defeats the enemy and transforms into a yellow 1967 Volkswagen Beetle. In 1987, the 18-year-old Charlie Watson finds the Beetle in a junkyard, and the owner Hank gives the car to her. The teenager is a great mechanic that misses her father and lives with her young brother and her estranged mother and her boyfriend. My god, why is this so long? Charlie accidentally activates a signal, and the Decepticons track down B-127 on Earth. Two Decepticons head for Earth to capture and destroy the Autobot, convincing Dr. Powell and the army that they are a peaceful enemy. <laughs> I lost myself. Dr. Powell and the army that they are peaceful and the enemy is a dangerous robot. Meanwhile, Charlie befriends B-127 and calls him Bumblebee. Wow. Probably didn't need to read all that. Clearly, I couldn't read all that. I like Bumblebee. It's a smaller film, smaller scale, smaller budget, smaller everything, really. Bumblebee is the centralized character. There's a couple Transformers here and there. 
The beginning of this movie is fantastic. It has this epic war on Cybertron. It's like a 10 minute fan, fa uh, fan fiction gone right. Everybody likes this movie, I think. I don't know anybody that doesn't. I don't think it's as good as the Michael Bay first film, but I would definitely put it in the top. We'll get to that in a second, though. Here's some trivia. Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus, is the only cast member to appear in every theatrically released Transformers film, and he's going to be in the new one. He had voiced the character in the Transformers The Movie in 1986 and reprised the role in the live-action films, including this one. This is a funner fact, a more fun fact. Peter Cullen revealed at a convention in 2020 that he didn't partially enjoy, I'm sorry, particularly, he didn't particularly enjoy working on this film. This is because the studio decided to use a different voice actor during production, so they wouldn't have to pay Cullen for multiple recording sessions. That's really shitty. And only brought him in at the very end to record all the lines. As such, Cullen had to match the other actor's performance since the animation for Optimus Prime had already been completed and couldn't be altered. That's really crappy. With a budget of 102 to 128 million, somewhere in the ballpark, this is the least expensive Transformers movie to date. Despite being the lowest grossing Transformers film in the series, with a worldwide gross of 468 million, it was still considered a box office success following the failure. Failure. Yes, because movies, you have to double their budget and some. Usually it's two and a half times. So if the movie costs 100 million, you, you put it to around, it needs to make 20, uh, 2 million 500, 2,500 million. <laughs> That's a great, great way to say that. And it made 468, so it's well on its way. Very much a success. Oh, and, and last thing, the last one was a failure Transformers The Last Night, only it lost 100 million. I think I said that earlier, but we're back to it. $100 million loss, made up by the ride, of course. Here's some Q&A for you, uh, just a couple. I asked people on YouTube if they had any Transformers related questions just before I went live. Edward Hall asks, if you had to pick another director to helm a Transformers movie, who would you pick and why? You know, as much grief as we give Michael Bay, I think he did a damn good job. I think the big problem is the scripts. The writing in these movies is atrocious. They should have kept it simpler. The scale got way out of hand way too early. Saving the world, saving the, the Autobots every single time is boring. And so yeah, by the fifth one, we find ourselves with Merlin and magical staffs because we've done everything else, right? How much bigger do you go? And now this new one's got Unicron, which is a planet-eating Transformer who is already established as Earth in Transformers 5. That's why they're retconning that whole thing. And that's the biggest Transformer around. It eats planets. So if this is a trilogy, they better damn well keep Unicron alive for it. And I'm guessing they do. I'm guessing he's the Thanos of the Transformers world. I think Spielberg not producing and maybe directing would have been great. Spielberg seems like the right kind of guy to handle this type of movie. He would have made it a little bit more magical, I think. A little less um, dude bro. Would have been very fun to see. One more question from Chapman Reviews. Which movie should they have stopped at? Uh, yeah. Um, if we were to Halloween this thing, where you, you basically, you, the first one exists, but then you take it from two on that's what i would do i would say scrap everything past the first movie and go from there so yeah they should have they should have stopped after one i would have stopped after one let me look one more time make sure there's no more questions i got one more uh i don't know how to say the name oto why do you hate the g1 designs i always wondered that having starscream shoot prime with megatron would have been epic plus tapes why do they, oh, I'm sorry, why do they hate the CGI designs? Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm like, I don't hate the, the OG designs. I agree. I don't know why, and when he says plus tapes, I think he means um, Star Starscream shoots the tapes out of the tape player. Or is that sound, that's sound wave. Did he say sound screen? That sound wave does that. Regardless, I don't know why they hate the original designs, but it looks like with this new one, they're going back to it, which is great. It's about time. It's about time. 
Let's rank these things really quick. I didn't even need to write them down because I know off the top of my head. Tra the, the last one is The Last Night. That's the worst film in this franchise. Easily. I would then just go in reverse order, to be honest with you. Last Night, and then we move to Age of Extinction. And from there, we just head right on up to Dark of the Moon. And after Dark of the Moon, we go right into... What's that one called? Revenge of the Fallen. That's going to be in the third spot. In second place for the second best Transformers movie is Bumblebee. And then we do the Bayformer, the 2007 one that started it all, Michael Bay's opus, Transformers. Simple, elegant, simply Transformers. So there you have it. Transformers in the number one, Bumblebee in the number two. And then the rest, I don't really care. Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon, you can switch them if you want. Makes no difference. But I think most people would agree with the top three on the list. Or at least the top two. I think they're both uni universally acceptable. And I think that uh, we did this in a decent amount of time. I don't want to waste any more of it. We all have plans. We all have things we have to do with our lives. So those are my thoughts on Transformers. A very messy franchise. Still fun. You can still watch a lot of them. It sucks that they're so long. And that's kind of where I'm at with Fast and the Furious. I totally get why people like them. They're super large scale. Hundreds of millions of dollars blowing up on screen. But I do like to have a somewhat plausible or at least competent story behind it. Otherwise, you're just really watching cutscene after cutscene from a video game wondering, does any of this tie together? Do I care about anything outside of boom, boom explosions? <laughs> Give it to me. Give me something. And I'm hoping Rise of the Beast does that. Give me some emotional drama. Give me some stakes. Give me some characters I can enjoy again. We'll see. I want to hear from you, though. If you're watching on YouTube, you can throw a comment. What do you think of the Transformers movies? Please rank them if you want. Um, if you're not on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, this is going live there first. It goes up in the mornings at 8 a.m. every Monday. So, And I do these live watch-alongs at 8 p.m. So, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. I appreciate it. You can also follow me there. You can uh, follow me on YouTube. You can subscribe. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a $1 tier. $10 goes up to like 100 bucks a month, depending on how much you like my stuff. But anything you can give, I would appreciate. This is a one-man operation. It's a passion project, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to do. I'm also on YouTube at the um, join button, so you can do it there as well. It's the same thing. There's different tiers. There's different perks. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff behind the scenes that you get access to as well. Okay, that's it. That's the Transformers thoughts. I will let you know how the movie is come later this week after I see it. I'm excited. And I know I promised last week. Well, I didn't promise. But I said I was going to talk about the Disney 3D animated movies or the Pixar 3D animated movies. I'm saving it because Elemental is right around the corner. I want to capitalize on that momentum. And we'll talk about it then. It just makes sense. Okay, that's the show. I'll see you next time. Take care.